Welcome to Behind the Scenes with App Inventor. Today's guest is Ziad Abdelhamid, a 22-year-old engineer who was the winner of the individual category of the 2022 Appathon for Good. Ziad lives in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and he just graduated from the Asia Pacific University of Technology and Innovation with a degree in mechatronics. As he mentions in the interview, he's crazy about the internet and th of things, and he shows us three cool projects that he created using App Inventor and physical devices. First off is his Rotary Car Park, which is a new way to save space in congested cities for vehicles and pedestrians. And today we'll see the scale model that he built for his class project. First, you click on the Park My Car button in the app. The app sends a wireless message to the model, finding an empty parking space. And then later, to get your car back, you punch in a code into the app, click the Retrieve button, and your ride arrives back on the ground floor. Ziad even built a safety sensor so that in the real world, drivers wouldn't be in danger of getting hurt by all the moving parts. Finally, you can press the rotate button on the app to get your car to spin around 180 degrees in the spot so that you can just drive away. Okay, so welcome Ziad. What made you create this? Yeah, uh, it is uh, for my final year project for my degree. Um, the Rotary Car Park itself, I do my research. I found that it is already implemented in many cities. So the idea came to me why I make not to make it more automatic. Because when I do my research, I found that uh, the already implemented car, Rotary Car Parks need uh, some physical interact from the user to park or retrieve his car back. So that's why that, that's why I want to make it more automatic and to be fully depend on an app, a mobile application. That's why I implement the idea of IOC to the project. Yeah, Internet of Things, right? Is that's a, an exciting new field to gather data, but also to actuate things um, automatically and have the user in control a lot of a lot more things in their environment. As you mentioned, that IoT is a new field, and I think in the, so. The, in the future, it will be the most important technology that we all we use. Now, from your mobile phone, every you can control everything around you. Yeah, that's why I like this field, and I want to start my my life or my career life toward this technology. Yeah. And the beginning was from this project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can yeah. you can control your home and you can also um, request your uh, your car mm -hmm. show up right in yeah. front of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your design process. So uh, the pro yeah, the process of the developing itself is first of all I need to find a platform, an IoT platform, and after I, my research, I found MIT. And this was my first time to use uh, and to know about MIT. I go through it alone, self-learning uh, through MIT. And I found that it is give me the chance to connect to my equitators and sensors and to develop apps. So the process, that's the whole process. For example, I have my sensor. I take data from my sensor, send it to the cloud database. And in my case, I use Firebase because it is uh, available on MIT. And then I take the data from Firebase and display it on the GUI. Yeah. I don't know Firebase well. How, do you, how did you, for, to actuate the motors, you're sending commands to Firebase. And then how do they get from Firebase to the motor? The first step is the command come from the GUI, from MIT yeah. to, to, Firebase, to Firebase. And then I take the value from Firebase and uh, send it to the micro microcontroller. So actually, um, my microcontroller read the values from database. And based on this value, I can control the movement of my DC motor. Yeah. Do I remember that there were like actual toy cars that you were showing as examples? Yeah. Now, yeah. where, did you, where did you get the toy cars? Um, I asked uh, my uh, my sister to bring it for me, to buy <laughs> for me some toy car, and, and, I, and I used it. <laughs> 
where, where did you source the mechanical parts? There's a lot. There, yeah, there's like a there's like bicycle sprockets in there and all kinds of things. So my prototype, I I built it on uh, five five car space five. I found that I need a gear chain with with fifty chains in order to put the five on them. And it when I make the coding and the timing when when it's split uh, rotate it will be. Uh, stable yeah, and it would be good yeah. and the sprocket itself I ask it I go to uh, I remember that I take for me around months every day I go to bicycle shops in KL ask, tell, show them what I want and I buy the uh, buy stuff and doesn't work and at the end I design the sprocket on sold work and I go to here a factory and ask him to manufacture for me in the beginning and finally, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the mechanical part was more hard than the coding and electronic part. <laughs> and I don't like it yet. <laughs> in, the, in the area you live in, in Malaysia, is there a lot of traffic? Yeah, because uh, here in KL, Kuala Lumpur, mainly, yeah, there is huge traffic jams. So yeah, if his idea is implemented, I think it will solve the problem. Yeah. Do you do you have a car? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what other kinds of IoT projects have you worked on? Yeah, uh, actually, I have another project I also use MIT. Um, so basically, I make a a smart check in pro, uh, uh, application. Uh, let me explain to you. Uh, yeah, so I just created a very simple application that by push a button, uh, you will push the button and tap your phone to the NFC tag, and all the information is saved on Firebase. Yeah, and actually now currently I am a part timer in a company here in Malaysia called I Train Kids. I am teaching kids from age to six to seventeen. Uh, coding and programming and one of the modules that we teach them is MIT yeah oh that's great <laughs> it's, yeah okay there is another project I work on it yeah, using MIT also uh, there's a it's a group project yeah me yeah we build we do a smart watch to monitor your health like uh, heart beats uh, temperature spo2 yeah and also connect all this data to GUI yeah yeah what what did you you used an off the shelf watch and then you and, uh, or and no actually the watch itself we build it by own self wow uh, yeah it, uh, it is not very small like the smart watches but yeah at the end we able to do it yeah <laughs> what was it like when uh that moment in all, all all mechatronics projects, you think, oh, you know, this is not going to work. There's going to be some kind of, um, you know, data layer that's not going to be talking to another layer or something like that. Or the ESP is not going to be talking to Firebase. Um, what was the moment was like when you, uh, you know, you, you, you pressed the UI button and the thing actually started doing its thing? I cannot express my feelings in words, actually. <laughs> It was a, a great moment because it takes a lot of time and effort for me actually from November until uh, until May and it takes time until I found the suitable mechanical stuff, the gear chains, the sprockets and how I can attach the plates to the gear chain and then after that I go to the electronic part and how I make the DC motor works and the timing of DC motor when it stop, uh, uh, all of that. So the moment that I take the video in it was uh, unforgettable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, it's great. You you really have a knack for uh, putting putting these pieces together. So it's a yeah. pleasure pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure for me to talk with you today and and. Working with MIT Inventor was a great thing. Yeah. Make my projects more easier. <laughs>